In this video today, we're going to be visiting Tech10, the largest aquarium retailer here in Australia. It's a whopping 1,200 square metres of aquarium supplies, located just north of Brisbane in Caboolture. It's a family owned and operated store, and it's really a one-stop store for everything. You may be familiar with their online store too, which is quite popular. I bought my FX6 filters from there ages ago for my African cichlid tank. I really hope that you enjoy this video. There's gonna be a lot to see in it. If you do, don't forget to give it a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you're enjoying videos like this, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Because Tech Den is about a 50 minute drive north of where I am, I thought I would keep heading up to the Sunshine Coast and go to NVS Aquariums, which is the supplier for my lids that I have on my two water box tanks. One of my tanks, the lids I got secondhand with it, and the netting was a bit of an older type they used to use. So I was keen to get it re-netted so it matched the netting for my African cichlid tank. It is mainly a signage store actually, but because Nick is into aquariums, it was a bit of a side hustle that he had when it came to creating these polycarbonate lids, which he gets made by a third party and then he nets them and everything and sends them out. And Nick was also kind enough to give me some replacement lids as well, which was really nice. And he showed me how you can just polish the edges a little bit as well to make them look like new. That was great having that all sorted out and kind of killing two birds with one stone by being able to drive up north to Tech Den and to NVS Aquariums. Thank you. To tech den now, do some filming there. Great store tour. Yes, the plan. <laughs> I haven't been there yet, so I'm excited to see it. Yeah. What's that? That is a DJI 2, I think, or a, there's another name for it, a DJI something. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pocket, Pocket, I think it is, yeah. It's been so good, I've had it for like two years. It's so good. I had a little bit of a talk to John, who's the owner of Tech Den, and got some background information of the history of the store. Started off probably about 10 years ago when we actually started the store. Before that, I was breeding L number catfish and exotic catfish, and then just decided that whenever I wanted something, I had to go to three different stores to actually get what I wanted. And I thought it'd be great if there was just one place you could go to and just had absolutely everything. So from 10 years ago, where I had my L numbers and was breeding those, went into our first store, which was probably about a hundred odd square metres, and that was round at Learjet and then we outgrew that probably within a couple of years. Then our next step was to Cessna Drive and then our next step was into Piper Street and that was about 650 square metres. And now we're into here, which is probably double the size, more storage and um, finally had a chance to lay it out with everything available. So it's just one stop for everything you need. It is absolutely a mammoth store. It's so big. And some of the things that they've extended on is they've got ponds now and they're planning on doing up some really nice pond displays at the front here with a little area that you can sit, which is just such a great idea, especially for people who get dragged around to fish stores. And I'm really interested in these ponds too, because I'm thinking of setting up a little bit of a patio pond at my place as well with some nice native fish maybe. So that would be great. And then they've also extended out to having some reptile stuff, which makes sense because they're going to be selling turtles as well with the ponds and everything and turtles being reptiles. It's good to have availability of all of that. What I'll do is I'm going to start over here in this corner, which is the display tanks and show you what they've got set up so far. And then what we'll do is we'll go around to the fish. So I've got some salt water, some fresh water along the back, and I'll show you the variety that they've got there. And then I'll just quickly show you as well the rest of the store and all of the stock and everything that they've got. And so these reef tanks used to be set up a little bit more with more corals and stuff. But after moving, of course, with reef tanks, they're quite difficult to move with all the coral and everything. So they're not quite as set up as what they were previously. But then I absolutely love this African cichlid Lake Malawi tank that they've got here. So they recently added a bunch of really nice colourful males in here just the other day. And they're looking really, really gorgeous. Some beautiful big African cichlids. And then I was looking at this tank before. There's some fish in here that I really love. So they've got some nice big whiptail catfish. 
and you don't often see them fully grown like that. So he said that these ones are about 18 months old, but often I see them in the pet stores and they're quite tiny, whereas these ones are really big. And I think this is the male here. You can see how he's got some really nice little bristles on his face and cute little fun display here, SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, but some, I think they look like Pacific Blue Eyes in there as well. So native Australian fish. We've got Steve Bain's book here as well, I believe in rainbows. It's a really good book. And this is their counter here, that they've got a nice big counter at the front. All right, so let's head up the back and have a look at some of the fish. I've got Emily here who actually has her own page, Gem Aquatics, yes. as well, and does a lot of pet sitting for different types of animals, not yeah. just fish, too. Yeah. And Emily is going to show us around and tell us about some of the fish and everything yeah. just as we go. Yeah. So let's have a look. We'll start maybe with the saltwater corner, I guess, it's just since it's here. Yeah, um, tank maintenance as well. Oh, yes, tank maintenance, too. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so we've got our coral tank in this section. You've got a couple of different kinds of coral. So the main two types of coral are your SPS and LPS, so long stony polyps and short stony polyps. We don't have a large variety of the short stonies. We mainly have long stony polyps in here, um, but there's a couple of really cool ones. My favorite out of all of these are the glitter gonies. Um, so these little guys in here, they're beautiful little kinds of goniopora and they almost look like they have glitter in them. And of course, yes. possum, like always, you can't get any good footage without possum photobombing. <laughs> is that this fish? <laughs> yes, this is possum. So she's a ring tail tang, hence the name possum. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she's a cool little addition. She's our little shop fish. We've had her for quite a few years. Oh, she's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Then we've got some more fish on this. Yes, so in here. here we're pretty low stock on saltwater fish at the moment, unfortunately. We do have a couple of little things. Um, we've got some wrasse and the sturgeon. Yeah. Um, we usually have a much larger variety. We're just waiting on our shipment to come in this week. If we head down here, this is where we see all the freshwater stuff start? Yes, so this tank here, eventually we will be expanding into reptiles. So uh, we do yes. have a turtle tank just cycling at the moment. Uh -huh. um, fingers crossed we'll be get going in a few months with those guys. Um, but as we move further down, at the moment, we do have a couple of cute little Saratoga in here. Aww, Adorable so at this size when you see them compared to a couple of feet big. Yes, I didn't even notice them in there yeah. before. They're so tiny. Awesome Australian native, those guys. And then we head on to the beautiful discus. These guys are one of my favourites. A little bit more temperamental and harder to keep, but if you have basic experience and can keep on top of your water parameters, they're a great addition. Um, but definitely a specialised tank. Discus is your main centrepiece and then work around those guys. They're beautiful discus that you guys yeah. have too. Like they look really nice and healthy and nice quality. Yeah, we try and get some good quality guys. Good in. price too. Yeah, we also yeah. sometimes hand select these guys as well. So our supplier up at Bayfish, we go and hand select them. So we do try and get the best quality in here that we can. Oh, that's great. That yeah. is so cheap. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're on sale at the moment, <laughs> those big guys, which is always good for the pocket. Yes, nice. Yeah. And then, We've got heaps of discus actually, they keep going. Yeah, we've got a couple of different size varieties. So we've got a couple of the big guys, mediums and smalls. And then I'm sure your favorite section, the American yes. cichlids. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we've got some nice color variations in there. Oh, these guys are gorgeous. They are. The only thing is my tank is pretty much full now. Yeah, so I was looking at that. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get a new tank. You can only add so many. Yeah. But oh, these it just guys gives you a reason to get multiple tank syndrome. This is true. <laughs> Yeah, nice. So what a really nice selection of African cichlids. Yeah, we got a couple of different lakes as well, like you got your Mambanus and then also your Malawis. So you got a couple of different options to choose from depending on what sort of African tank you were going for. Also got some little Sindonthuses in there as well if you wanted an American catfish. Oh yes, nice. Yeah, they're hiding in oh, the bottom yeah. of that one. These little guys. So tiny and cute. <laughs> and then if we keep going across. Yeah, so now we head into more of your Amazon and normal fresh water. So that other section was discus, which are a bit fancier and also your African cichlids. So require a bit of a different water parameters. And then these guys are pretty much versatile. These Thai glass catfish are really cool. So there's multiple species of your Thai glass catfish. We had some surrendered a couple of months ago, which were a different variety. These guys max out at about 10 centimeters. These ones that we got in the other week max out at about 20 centimeters. So they were massive, they're wow. like monster versions of them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that makes me realize, that's what I missed at the um, front of the store. You guys have the adoption tank yes. set up. We'll have to get some footage of that. Yeah. That's really nice. It's an awesome program that we run here. It just keeps our native waterways clean and free of invasive species, which is always a plus. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So basically, 
you guys will take fish from people when they don't want them anymore yeah. and then give them away for free yeah. to responsible owners. Yeah, we yeah. make sure that they've got the right tank set up and right tank mates for the fish that they're going to be taking. I saw some really big angel fish over Yeah, the so they're down too. a little bit further. We'll get to them in a minute, but yeah, there's some monsters in there, which I love to see in shops as well, just so you can get an idea of what size your fish you're actually going to get to, because yes. a lot of shops, they do stock babies, and a lot of people don't actually realise how big they get. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to see the size difference, so you know what to expect in the future. Yeah, for sure. We've got some silver dollars in here. They're pretty cool in Australia oh, yes. especially, because it's the closest thing you can get to a piranha. So if someone wants a piranha oh. tank, silver dollars are definitely the way to go. Um, they're kind of the opposite side of the piranha, so instead of smashing meat, they will smash any sort of plants. So if you do want a heavily planted tank, unfortunately, probably not the best option. Um, and out the back there hiding in that little log, there is a little ghost knife as well, which oh, yes. I absolutely love. Oh yeah, they're beautiful. They are gorgeous. See if we can get them out for you. And these guys are a good example of fish that get really big too. Hey? Yes, these guys get massive. So we had some come in in the adoption program the other day and they're about 20, 25 centimetres. So they do get some decent size to them. Same with your ghost knives, they get a foot or two big. Yeah. Really cool fish, got to make sure you have a decent sized tank because obviously with the size, as they get larger, unfortunately they will eat any smaller tetras, especially at night they do come out and eat the eyes of smaller tetras. Oh, no. um, so make sure you do have bigger fish to go in with them, but there's plenty of options that are compatible tank mates for these guys. Mm -hmm. And really cool as well because they use echolocation to move around, they don't really use their sense of vision. Oh, how awesome. Yeah, so another cool thing is as well, if you want to put a hide in the tank, you can put a clear piece of acrylic pipe so they feel like they're still hidden but you can still uh -huh. see them, so which is really them. cool. Yeah. <laughs> And stuff up yeah, here. and oh my gosh, loaches. clown loaches. Clown loaches, they're awesome. In general, I love loaches. I know, they're so cool the way that they all school together and hang around. I love these fish and little yo yo loaches too. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And then, gosh, there's so many tanks. Oh, yeah, it just keeps angels. going. You think you get to the end of it, it's like, whoop, there's oh, more. It just continues, yeah, look yeah. at that. Just <laughs> keeps going. <laughs> But yeah, these guys are awesome. I love the angels. Yeah. They were one of the first fish that I got when I got into the hobby and I've still, they're my main display tank, my angel display tank. Oh, so nice. they got really cool personalities, each one of them. Yeah, and these are huge. It's probably hard to see how big they are on camera, but yeah. they are very, you know, very big. Photos never do them justice. <laughs> no. So hard tank filming tanks too. Yeah, these tanks can be deceiving as well because we've had some come in at that size and I've gone, wow, they're way bigger than mine. And then I put them in my six foot tank and they're the same size. I was like, oh, okay, maybe mine are a bit bigger <laughs> than I thought. <laughs> and these quarries as well. Stir by quarries are one of my favorite things ever. All quarries in general, they're just awesome to watch. They have such personalities where they just scoot around the tank together. And then we've got some gouramis. Yeah, so then we head into the gouramis. The gouramis are another really cool species. They're in the same family as your betters, so they have a labyrinth organ, which means they can breathe oxygen from the surface of the water and also build bubble nests, much like your male betters. So that's really cool about those guys. So they've got plenty of species of tetras here as well, all different kinds of colours and shapes. Another awesome thing up here is your blind cave tetras. So these guys actually have no eyes when they fully develop, so they're a Mexican Aww. kind of tetra. And in the wild, they live in caves which are fully black out, so they don't need the use of eyes. So when they're born, the fry are actually born with eyes, but as they develop, they reabsorb their eyes. So that's a really cool thing wow, about those guys. how interesting. Yeah. And they don't use echolocation like your ghost nice to get around. They have a more sensitive lateral line, so they can pick up on objects around them and also changes in water density. Wow. That is really fascinating. Yeah, they're really cool. The blind cave touches. They're probably one of my favorite unique fish. A lot of people are scared of them, but I think they're awesome. <laughs> So cool. Yeah. Got some different kinds of barbs as well. So now heading away from the tetras and more into the barbs and your lie bearers. Mm -hmm. It's just everything. Okay, yeah. here we go. This is what I'm excited for. Yeah, the natives. Okay. We've got the rainbows. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm actually thinking of getting some of these as well for my tank. Yeah, your river tank that you've set up? Yes. Well, I'm thinking of getting maybe some of these red rainbows because they get really nice and red, hey? Yeah, the males especially, they colour up really nicely, those red rainbows. Same with the Bosmartis, they're probably my second favourite. They get a gorgeous, like, neon blue through them. We've got some of them in the display tank up the front. Yeah, and we've also got some of your bigger predative natives as well. So there's some Barramundi down here and also some bass in this middle one. So they do grow quite large, but they are quite yes. a popular one. A lot of people stock their dams with the Barramundi. And then some moving on to the light bearers. So yeah, you've got all your guppies, platies, mollies, all the colourful fancy stuff that's quite popular with your kids. Um, mm -hmm. But quite easy to look after and quite popular with everyone, especially if you wanted to get an easy breeding project. These guys are light bearers, so very easy to breed them. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, sword tails. Yeah, the sword yeah. tails are really cool, how the males get that little point on them. Yes, my friend and I went and caught some native fish the other week and there was so many yeah. sword tails. I know they're not native, but like... Yeah, but someone just, like, dumped bred. their tank in there. Yeah. But yeah, there's an example. They're very easy to breed, so they do take over quite quickly. Yes. And then finally, moving on to our goldie section. So we've got an array of fancies and standard goldies. So your standards are your longer bodies, so your comets and chibunkins, and then you've got your fancies, like your randers and ranches, which are bit more of an odd shape. These are so like these ones? are gold comets so they right. are a kind of comet they're just more of like a yellowy gold color and then over in this tank here you've got your red and white comets. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and then these are the fancier ones. Like yeah so they're your ranches up there I absolutely love them they're like little marshmallows. Oh my gosh they're so cute. <laughs> yeah they're so cool when they get bigger as well because they keep that body shape so a 20-25 centimeter fish at that size with that body shape it just looks really interesting. Yes. Same with the Orandas, they're probably my second favourite in the fancy, so they've just got a big brain on them. Oh wow. <laughs> they're really cool. Oh gosh. And then these fatties as well. Yeah, so they're just your fantails. I think they're actually hybrids, so they're not proper fantails because yeah. of the body shape they have on them. Yeah, I used to have one of these as a kid. Yeah. I would keep trying to buy one to put an app on, but it kept dying. Yeah, the it's black moors. more sensitive, yeah. Yeah, the fancies unfortunately can be a bit sensitive. Comets and Shibunkins, so your standards, they're pretty much bulletproof. They do really well in ponds. Um, your fancies are a little bit more temperamental. They prefer a solid temperature and like solid parameters. Uh, so they do better in inside tanks. Yes. Um, yeah. Definitely if you want to go goldies, make sure you've got a decent sized tank because they're big poop machines and they also get quite large, even your yes. fancies. They get to small soccer ball size. Yeah, I think that's what you guys had in the adoption tank. It was like one goldfish. Yeah, there's rams. one lone issue bunking in there at the moment. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's pretty much all of the fish then. Yeah. Wow, look how many tanks there are. We came so far. <laughs> that's great. Just a little bit to look at over here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for that's showing okay. us through all of the tanks and thank everything. Thank you for having us. And hopefully you guys learned a little bit about all the different types of fish and you can see that they're not short for variety here. Yeah. So. If you want to come to just one place to get all of your stuff, like, this is the place to come. And if there's any, anything that we don't have in stock as well, feel free to flick us a message and we can order it in from our supplier for you. Yes, and your online store is huge too. Yes. So, yeah, and really competitive prices too. Like, you don't really beat your price online. Yeah, no, we find. try and do the best prices that we can here, so you're definitely going to get bang for your buck. Yes, it's really good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I might just do a little bit more filming, just show you some of yeah. the other stuff more generally. There's also some betters up the front as well, if you didn't see them. Oh, yes. Betters are my babies. I specialise in these guys, so... So yeah, we've got a couple of different varieties in here. So you've got your Dumbos, your fan tails, crown tails, and also your standards. So there's plenty of tail types in the bedders and also any color variation that you can think of. So there's definitely something for everyone. They're pretty low care. Um, as long as you've got a cycle tank with a heater and filter and heavily planted, especially for the bigger tail guys, because they do unfortunately get tired. And you can see in a couple of these guys, they have started to nip their tails a little bit, but they fully heal back and grow quite well. Just gotta make sure you've got enough coverage for them yeah they're so beautiful i love betters they've got so much personality too yeah that's why i love them and each one's different like no two are the same which is probably why they're one of my favorites especially these candy koi's they're just absolutely gorgeous yes. and the cool thing about the koi and marble jean as well is they'll change colors several times throughout their lifetime so you won't have the same fish the whole time you keep it which is pretty cool you can wake up one morning and you have a whole new fish wow how so, cool i didn't know that yeah the marble jean's an awesome thing but it can also suck as well because you see a better that you absolutely love and then in a couple of months he's going to change <laughs> Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, and these are all males. But yes, you these can get are all some males. nice females too. Yeah, I kind of wish we had some in stock at the moment because we get some really nice coloured females in stock that almost look like males, but they have the shorter fins, so also makes it a little bit easier in tanks. They don't have that weight of their fins, so it doesn't have to be as densely planted. Yes. Yeah, absolutely love this guy, the little yeah, Nemo. He's, he's beautiful. beautiful. He's gorgeous. If only I had more room for tanks, I'd take them. <laughs> <laughs> I might just point out, out as well, everything is run on sump systems here, so it may not look like everything is heated and filtered, but hidden yes. behind there, there it's is connected. a hole. Yeah. Yeah, so everything does have a heater uh, and filter yes. and everything in there, so. Yes, and that's what Dean was saying before, like every row has a sump as well, so they're yes. not all connected. Yeah, so under that black box at the bottom there, we've got sump systems behind there, so yeah, everything filters through that one system, and we also have UV sterilizers to kill off any baddies in between systems, so. Yes. Yeah, that's a great all idea. All good stuff. Awesome, well thank awesome. you. Cool, thank you. Cool. Okay, so I've got Talia here with me and we're going to get some of the rainbow fish out. So we've just been having a bit of a talk about them and deciding which ones would be the best. 
I was looking at some of the spotted blue eyes, but unfortunately they literally got sold out, I think this morning or yesterday. So they can wait for another time, but they do have a really good selection. So they've got the crimson spotted ones down here, which I've already got. And then they've got some banded, black banded ones, which look kind of similar, but they've got a darker band. And I think I've got some of those guys too, but we're looking at maybe getting some red rainbows here. And these ones get really huge, hey, you were saying. Yeah. And yeah. start to look a little bit funny as well. They get like a hump <laughs> on their head. <laughs> yeah, they get a little baby head and then a really big, big hump on their body. And they get really nice and red too. Yes. Your boys especially will be like a fire red. And then I might get some of these like Katubu rainbows too. Because they get more like a blue colour. Nice and deep blue. Yes. Your boys will get a really nice, they actually tend to get almost like a yellowish, sort of a pale blue stripe across the head, like down the back of the head and down the spine. And then the sides of them will just be this beautiful, deep blue, sort of a green colour through them. You can see some of the boys in there at the moment starting to, oh, yeah, to show off their colours a bit and show off a bit of their maturity. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> We've been there, done discus. Have done rainbows, but rainbows deserve a bit of extra love. Yeah, I agree, they're the best. Yeah. Because I got African cichlids, because I was like, oh, they're a freshwater fish that's colorful, like saltwater fish, or like discus, but easier to look after. Oh yeah. But then rainbow fish are kind of the same thing, except no one knows about them. No, <laughs> they're, they're them. so underrated. More people need to give the, the rainbows a bit of love. Got to yeah. love on the Aussie natives in general. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. So these are all native Australian ones, hey? Pretty sure the Lake Katubus are, otherwise they may be a New Guinea actually. New Guinea. The Papua oh, New Guinea. Okay. Your black bandits, crimsons, goiters, um, reds, all Australian. Ornates obviously are also an Aussie. Um, I think you said you caught one in the creek, so. Yes. I'd hope they're an Aussie one, otherwise <laughs> it probably shouldn't have been there. That's the majority of uh, the ones that we've got at the moment at least. There are so many other different types that um, uh, come up every now and then. Surprisingly for an Australian native fish, not as easy to find as, yeah. you know, a lot of your other types, which is yes, unfortunate, is but I will try and grab you four of the nicest reds from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the other thing too. I don't really like plants too much. And so that's yeah. why I wanted African cichlids because I was like, I don't need to put plants, but then rainbow fish don't even really have plants in the wild that much either. No, it's one of those, you can chuck them in there and they're not going to be mad about it. They're not going to, but um, it's not a necessity for them. You can easily set up a really nice tank for them and keep your fish really, really nice and happy without having to go into plants and, and go down that track. So it's a good thing about them. They are, they're just, they're really nice and hardy. They're not so, they're not one of these fish that need such specific care requirements. You can be a little bit more lenient on how you want to keep them and how you want to have the tank set up. Mm -hmm and they're a lot more forgiving sort of like i guess africans in a way like yeah as long as you can you know give them a good environment that is in the realm of what they like mm -hmm. then they're good to go yeah were you wanting um there's a few in there that are showing a little bit more likely to be boys do you want to get a bit of a mix of some yeah i reckon maybe just a mix go for a mix see, yeah? yeah a lot of the time you find anyway if you get a bit of a mix your boys all show nicer colours with having a few females yes. around. It sort of spurs them to have their little dominance yeah. displays and try to show off a little bit more for the girls. Mm -hmm. Let's go. You're a really nice one back here. If you have a little look at this one, you might actually be able to see he's getting a fair bit of the blue coming out. Oh wow, in. yes. It's almost like luminescent. Yeah, that's gorgeous. It should be nice and happy. They're all nice little chubby fellas. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing a bit of Tech 10. In some upcoming videos, I'm going to be going back to AB's fish room with Maggie to pick up some fish. And we're gonna use the better camera that I've recently bought to see what it looks like with some of those tanks and get some nice footage. But I'm also going on a really exciting trip soon to Tin Can Bay, which is a couple of hours north from here. So I'm excited to show you that content. I haven't gone and done that yet. So if there's anything that you would like to see in particular with that visit to Tin Can Bay, let me know so then I can include it in those videos as well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!